past. Hi, Judy. Hi, Steve. This is <laughs> this is different <laughs> and fun. I'm honored and excited to be here with you. Well, isn't it you interviewing me? I've had a couple of them, haven't I? Yes. That's why I'm like, what's happening here? <laughs> now I'm going to find out about Julie. What's really happening with Julie and Julie's world? So uh, let's start okay. because I know a bit about your journey, but people who are listening may not. I know you've had a bit of a powerful journey, leaving one kind of reality and going into another. Can you say something about that journey? Yeah, you know, um, and I'm just going to say for my awesome fam soul family listeners, if you've heard this, then uh, thank you for listening again. And for those who haven't heard it, I'll just kind of briefly say that, um, you know, I, and this will be coming up, I'm sure a lot of my life was spent in this lane of just really, I think as a high empath, um, very much in the people pleasing lane in the wanting to do quote unquote, the right thing and, um, make sure that, that, you know, I was really not just being my best, but, but also trying to be your best, right? Like the best for you. I did a lot of time. I, I would say, I didn't know that I was, um, less conscious. I didn't think of myself as asleep at the wheel. I wouldn't have said that. Um, and I, I, you know, there were so many great experiences. I mean, college, I ended up, um, marrying someone who I dated in college, um, a really good person, good guy. Um, and at that time, um, you know, my parents had just split when I was in my twenties. Um, my sister, who's very open about this was struggling with, uh, alcohol and it was, it was a shit show. <laughs> I gotta be honest. Mm -hmm. My life felt mm -hmm. like that. Um, I always felt like, all right, what do I, like, I just was looking to be grounded and rooted and to feel stability. I didn't have a lot of that. I had a lot of love growing up, but, um, my dad, uh, you know, struggled with PTSD he was undiagnosed uh, as a Vietnam veteran. He, um, struggled financially. And I think part of that was due to bipolar and undiagnosed depression. And he's, he's doing way better today, but growing up, you know, in a very affluent area, it was, it was very unsettling at times, even though, I had a lot of friends. I did well. It was like, I always felt something was off a little and that, um, you know, my, my family, I mean, my dad was in and out of a job a lot. I, um, you know, would not be sure if I was going to be able to do this after school activity. When I was in college, I was told that, um, that I wouldn't be able to return. And I had already had three jobs as I was, you know, starting as a freshman and, you know, in America, you start freshman, sophomore. I, I started out with um, three jobs and I had jobs when I would come home. And it's funny, as I say this, I have like tears in my eyes. It was really, it was stressful. Yeah. And midway, I, I loved, I went to school upstate New York. I loved my school. I loved my friends. I did not want to leave. And, you know, I ended up um, turning to a family member, a very generous, gracious family member who's since passed, but is like my angel who, um, had a very family successful family business. And she was able to basically sponsor me, um, right. to be able to go back to university, but, and I tried to pay her back, but it was just, it was really, there was a lot of instability. And I, for me, I, I talk openly, I, I use food to cope with emotions. I was a, you know, I consider myself a kind of recovering food addict and sugar addict. And I, I just, so you know, all of that led to this, just wanting to like, be liked wanting, you know, I love people like wanting people to get along, wanting harmony. I was looking for that. I did not fully have that in myself. And so I was looking for that. And I, you know, I got married really young. Um, and I think at the time, you know, I think it was really maybe subconsciously that I had, I don't know doubts, but I, I didn't have a sense of who I was. So who I was there was really, it wasn't filled in. And for those who've done chakra work and energy work, it was like walking around and I felt like I was not fully filled in. My, my chakras were not fully, you know, circulating, vibrating is the only way I can explain it. And so, you know, I shoved down any emotions that were anything other than joy or, um, you know, anything, anything like sadness, grief, anger, frustration, resentment. I just, I shoved it down with food or, I just shoved it down with denial. It's really what I did. And, um, and, you know, I was raised in a family. We, my mom was an opera singer and then a music teacher. She would sing in churches. She would sing in all kinds of religious settings. Um, while I was raised through the Jewish faith, my, my parents were very open and we had people at our dinner table from all walks of life, all 
races and religions. And I always felt like that felt like me, one with mm-hmm. the world. Um, and when I got married, I married somebody who was um, more in the religious side of, um, in the Jewish faith and which is lovely. It just, I realized that I'm a <laughs> very much a free spirit. I'm not somebody, I don't do well with being told the rules. I mm-hmm. Steve, so long story short, you know, that what I would say is that I, um, the moment I, I had a, I had a moment where I, I was choosing whether to st- truly it's, it's, um, sad to me. I was so in the despair of eating and overeating and I couldn't stop. And I have a whole story about it, but I had this one day in May in 2003, I really considered, um, driving my car into a tree. I just, I felt like I looked so happy on the outside and I was miserable. And, um, mm. you know, my husband at the time was worried and was like, what is going on? And I didn't like my job and I couldn't, it just, it felt like a mess. And I ended up thankfully that was one of those moments. I heard an inner voice that said, Julie, if you just get to, there was a support group, a 12 step support group. And I had known about it. If you just get yourself there, everything's going to change. And that moment I had no idea, but it changed the whole course of my life because I started to, um, uncover myself That's USU. You know, I started to wake, uh, waken up, wake up. I started mm-hmm. to, I feel like, um, it was like a new reality started to emerge in my life. And I, and, and I think self-love and self-connection, all of that is in there. And, um, you know, I, I had a point and, um, we can talk about it, but I, you know, my intuition started getting a lot, lot louder. I had shoved that down with food. I think it had scared me because I, I am quite intuitive, like many, many of us are. And, um, you know, I woke up by two babies under the age of two and I was just not, I started to feel my feelings when I wasn't happy. And I woke up, um, and my inner voice woke me up in the middle of the night at three, three, three in the middle of the night, the moon was full. And I, I feel like I heard the moon speak to me through me. And it was like, it said, you really are not okay here anymore. And mm-hmm. that was the beginning <laughs> of a massive decision and, and, and shift that, um, my life has never been the same, um, because I chose to listen to it. So I'll pause there. That was long winded, but that kind of, <laughs> that sets the tone. Well, my experience of liberal and orthodox Judaism, I imagine that's a big shift to shift out of that you may have had a lot of resistance from perhaps people in that tradition. It is quite, you know, and, and for some people, I imagine it's quite comforting to have the rules and regulations. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I just feel like there's infinite ways to the divine. So there's no, to me, there's no right or wrong way. And I think for those that, whether it's, you know, in Catholicism or Judaism or Islam or, or Buddha, whatever, whatever it is, whatever you find connection to the divine, I I feel like wonderful just for me, especially being raised in such, um, you know, we, we honored other religions. We, I, I just, it was very open. And so for me, I, I am somebody who I love studying aspects of other religions and incorporating that into my life. I love, I'm just, you know, and it doesn't mean, I mean, I still came through that lineage yet. I, I just, I feel like, um, less of a religion and more of a spirit that's here, um, to just uplift, you know, my brothers and sisters along with myself, like, that's how I see it. So it just started to not fit and it's not bad or good. It just, it's like, that wasn't my me me. And I had to really look in the mirror and am I going to continue to wear a mask, which I know ironically, yeah. <laughs> wear <masks> these days. <laughs> but the, you know, the, the, like the facade, am I going to wear that and keep pretending and like, and just make myself try to be something I'm not. And I got a pretty strong intuitive knowing download that if I did that, that would not be, that would not be well for my health. That would not be well for anybody. And, um, it was a very, very intense and challenging time. Um, but I, I, I'm, it was the beginning of starting to trust this inner wisdom and voice. And to me, it's the, the, the higher self, you know, our higher self connected. And, um, it's like, I literally feel like someone put the lights on and all of a sudden I, I, you know, it's like, if you are living in, in gray and you don't realize, oh my God, there's color. I didn't even know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. And that journey probably helped you in some ways to where you are now. I mean, do you think if you didn't have that journey, you wouldn't be doing what you're doing now? There's no way and no way I'd be doing this now. I, for a lot of reasons, I can tell you that. 
Um, yeah, yeah, no, no way. And, and even the evolution, you know, and it's funny. I remember, I love Harrison Ford. He used to, yeah, I remember his quote, it took him 20 years to become an overnight success. And I was like, what yeah. do you mean? Like, you seem like you've always been doing this. I'm not, you know, I, and we can get into this. Like, who am I to say I'm, I'm not saying I'm Harrison Ford yet. I can say that where I am and what's coming through me, um, it, it has been a journey. I mean, I've been now at this for at least a decade, but certainly sh that shift was about, you know, 12, 12, 13 years ago. Um, there's, there's no way because this, this, what, who I am, what I'm up to has come from that deep heart wisdom, intelligence, and my soul. Um, and if I had not listened, I don't even, I don't even know if I would still be here. I mean, I really did get that message. Um, for me, yeah. it was, so yeah. it's sometimes I pinch myself, Steve. I'm like, oh my gosh, this reality, like I know the other reality. It was very much, that was the path I was on. And I even like living farther. I mean, all of it, it's all, it's all shifted. I'm remarried to a different partner. Like yeah. it's all trippy sometimes. Like what? Oh, I know. We had a similar journey. Cause I left, uh, I was in a, a Catholic uh, married Catholic faith. Yeah. And then I converted in it just to try it out, put my toe in the water for seven years. And then I, I was like, oh, okay, I'm coming out. I had young children and I had to leave. And that was a big, that was a big shift for me also. So I understand the journey. Uh, uh, yeah. lots of resistance from family around and not understanding and uh, but my, my next question to you is who do you think you are Julie? oh that's a good question <laughs> that is a good question who do I think I am this is what I'm writing about this is the book that came through me and I've been like this is such a this is such a big one and um so I want to address it in two ways okay because um I want to address it as the as the as the as my higher self and my spirit would address yeah. it. And I want to address it as the earthly, my earthly me. Um, yeah. cause I have a feeling, <laughs> a feeling to my beautiful listeners. I have a feeling that you probably others have experienced this. Um, so what's interesting is when I started, um, really awakening and I did that through, you know, the 12 step programs, therapy, coaching, I, I did a really powerful program. People probably heard of landmark. I went through all three of oh, their, yeah. Um, it really helped me a lot. I, I, I remember in one of the, uh, I think it was the advanced course, you step on a stage and you share from your heart who you are and it's a whole thing that you do and people, and then they re repeat it. And it's very powerful. There was something about when I did that. And I remember what came through me was like, I am a powerful luminary thought leader. I'm here to shift the consciousness of this planet through media, through, speaking through, you know, on camera, through writing and words, it, this, this came through me. And at the time I actually was doing some, um, some, believe it or not, hosting, acting and modeling. And I remember thinking like, who am I to do that? Like I struggled mm. with food and, um, but I got to do that in a way that was, it, who knew it actually, the training I did was so helpful because it taught me how to be just truly, you know, comfortable on camera myself, all of that. But, um, so the, 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 my spirit, my soul, when you ask me that question, who do I think I am? Like, who am I? Um, what I said, this, I, I truly feel and, and notice I'm saying feel not think, but I feel and know that I chose this lifetime. Um, that I, I, I'm somebody I, I love, I really do love people. <laughs> I, yeah. I know there's a better reality that's possible. That's heart centered. And I'm like, obsessed. I'm here to, to help myself and as many other people who want to be on the journey with me to remember, you know, divine love and who we, who we really are and to live that and to bring that essence to day-to-day -day life, to life on planet earth. Um, that's who I know I am now when my earthly side, the, and, and I don't want to, I don't like to put down any part. So ego, you know, e ego is not, it, it she, I, I think of it as a her, because for me, it's a her. Yeah. She just wants to keep me safe. She's a sweetie. Yeah. She's just, she's really like little worried girl trying to keep me safe. And so I, I really think of her that way. And she, and that part of me that gets into like, oh my God, who, like, who do you think you are to say you want to change consciousness? Like, <laughs> you know, you're, you're not Oprah. Like you can't say that you want to be like Oprah. I mean, I, you know, Oprah is one of my favorite people yeah. in the world. Louise Hay too, who's 
not here, but she is with me in spirit. I'll tell you, I feel her energy all the time. I just love her. Um, and others, you know, Maya Angelo and um, Wayne Dyer, some of the mm. greats that really inspire me. You know, when I start getting into, well, I'm not them. And who am I to think that I could impact the world like that? That to me, that's the piece that um, I am not willing to let that voice get in the way, but it, and it is still there. It's definitely still yeah. there. So yeah. this is the, do you think this is the imposter syndrome bit? Yeah, this is so cool. You know what? I am so glad you're asking me this. This is like real time. I'm actually coming up with this. I haven't thought of it in this way, but what just came through me is, you know, I, this, so I'm making this over, I'm oversimplifying this, but I do feel that, you know, we're all multidimensional and we all have a higher self. Uh, that's really what I think of as like your USG you is that connection to your essence, your, your higher self, that guidance that comes, that's part of me, part of you. And that part, I don't think ever says, who do you think you are? I think it might say like, you know, who you are, go be who you are. That's actually, that's what I'm hoping to manifest and, and actualize in my life. And, and, and anyone listening, that's what I stand for. Yeah. The part of us though, the ego or that part that's scared or protective, I just, I really do believe this. And I forget who, oh, is a major luminary who talks about this. I don't think it was Einstein, but it's like, we're either in love or fear. I mean, you can see that almost everywhere. Um, yeah. That side that gets into fear. And I don't know that it's any, on any other planet or sphere or in any other galactic entity, but it is here. And we are here on planet earth. If you're listening, you know, Hey, you're, you're, you're soul family. We're here. We're on planet earth together. And that fear, I think it's the, it's the voice of fear of doubt, of shame, of, um, worthiness. And I think all of those live in fear. And I think all of those are connected to that ego self that is just wants to keep you safe and protected and liked. So, you know, as I'm saying it, it's like, what I'm realizing, because in the past it's been really uncomfortable and I'm guessing others have had this too. And it almost to the point where it could be like, I'm embarrassed that I, I like, I don't want to feel this. I, I, I mean, imposter syndrome really is feeling like a fraud, right? Like feeling yeah, yeah. like a fraud. But the truth is if you are connected to your USU, your higher self, you're never a fraud. It doesn't even exist. There's yeah. no such thing. I hadn't even thought of this. So I'm like, I'm watching both sides of me, by the way, you know, like the angel and the, I'm just seeing like my higher self is like, hello, <laughs> hello. <laughs> and the, the part that feels that it's, you know, fraudulent, like, well, you know, Julie, the, 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 the voice that says, you know, Julie, who are you to think you're going to make an impact like Oprah, right? I love Oprah. She's one of my faves. Um, there are many others, but I just, yeah. she's where she came from, who she is. Right. And, and that's like, you don't have the amount of following. You don't, you know, you haven't hosted a TV show yet. I mean, it could just go on and on. It's going to find all the things that I'm not doing. Yeah. The thing is that voice, all of that, that's not coming from love. That's coming from fear. And what I do know about the universe and the laws of the universe. And if people, you know, call it law of attraction or the laws, the, the, the actual energetic laws, which are, you know, like gravity, if I stay in fear, I'm going to keep seeing that and getting that. So we've got to identify when you feel like a fraud. I think the first thing I'm realizing is you got to see it, be loving and be an observer of it. Because what I have done is, is made it feel like that's me. And the truth is it's not the essence of you or me. Yeah. I think, you know, what I've come to feel, and I've probably heard it also is that the ego has two modes usually. I mean, not, well, let's say three modes, but the two extreme modes would be overinflated. I am the biggest, the best, the most amazing, which might be a more narcissistic way of doing it. There yeah. are people I've met that go, you know, you know, I, I can outperform everyone and all, all this kind of thing. And then there's a deflated, which is like, oh, you know, I'm not as good. I'm comparing. I, I don't feel I'm worthy and all of that. And of course, most people in our category would be there. We're yeah. not the narcissistic. We're, we're like, we're, we'll be humble. You know, yeah. and um, certainly in England, and I know in America, there's there is uh, having met a lot of American authors, there is a bigger drive to be self-promoting because you know if I don't do it, nobody else will do it. It's a it's a kind of pioneering spirit in America. Whereas in England, there, there's this more "I'm sorry for taking up your time" <clears throat> type of attitude, a little bit. Yeah. And so somewhere in the middle is, you know, I always thought, well, you know, this is what was great thing. 
seeing a lot of British authors and then a lot of, uh, which were very self-effacing and American authors. And certainly the ones fresh off the boat or the plane uh, coming to London, speaking at alternatives when I was there would scare the British audiences because they were like, hello, London. And they're like, the audience, you could see them going, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I saw one or two like that. But of course, the more experienced authors know, have kind of more of a cultural feel and go, well, I'm going to speak to the culture I'm in. You know, I've, I've heard Wayne Dyer and I've heard a lot of American authors. And what I like about, I mean, Oprah is brilliant because they, they look, you look like you're just talking to someone and they're themselves. Yep. You know, they're not um, putting on, I mean, certainly in the spiritual zone, I've seen people put on the spiritual ego, which is like, you know, the white clothes and the namaste and speaking in hushed tones. Mm -hmm. To me, that's also part of the, you could say it is a kind of, I don't know if I should say it's an imposter syndrome, but you're putting on an act, really. Yeah. And this isn't what we're not about. So when we're not putting on the act, uh, who are we? Yeah, it, 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 exactly. I, and this, you know, it's coming through to me is, you know, and I'm, I'm, I would be curious, anyone listening, like really curious. I actually, I actually feel, and I had asked you this question before we started. It's like, what do you know that you're pretending you don't know? Yeah. What do I know that, that I'm pretending I not don't know? Well, I can tell you, I've been seeing myself since I was like six. I used to see literally, like, you know, you have imaginary friends. I had like imaginary camera crew and people that I was interviewing. I'm not even kidding. I mean, my friends who played with me would tell you, we would just play all the time. Or when I was brushing my teeth, I would, you know, be talking about um, how this toothbrush could really help you. And how are you doing over there? I mean, I was just, I don't know who I was. I mean, I really, I saw people all the time and I saw the- and, and I remember when, when Oprah came through and I was like, oh, wow, I just resonate with her energy and she's just being herself and she's helping people. And, you know, I think as I got older and I just made up stories and that's actually one of the Ted talks I did was about the words that we hear and we say really will shape your reality. And I remember thinking, well, I live in Boston. I don't live in Hollywood and my parents aren't like in that circuit and, you know, all these reasons. Um, and I know everyone else wants to be like Oprah, like, so, you know, okay. Um, it, I had all these reasons and, and, and reasons, reasons don't have anything to do with who we really are. It, it you mm. know, reasons, are to me a cousin of beliefs <laughs> when you have a reason. And this is the thing, this is where like emotional guidance system comes in. Like if a reason comes up, that doesn't feel good to me, that's an indication. That's not a great, that's a, let's redo that reason. Let's redo that belief. Like I really, to that question you asked, you know, I think we all do know, even if you're listening and you're like, I don't know. No, I really think there's a part of you, a part of each of us that's that has this, like, there's just whatever it might be, it may not be the same as what I'm saying. It's going to be whatever is there for you. But for me, I have known, I mean, even doing this show, this podcast, this, you know, my oldest best friend, I've known Meg since we were six. She's like, oh my gosh, you have been doing this since you were like seven. Like you've been, I'm not surprised you're doing the show. That is you. And like yeah. you said with Oprah, you know, I, to me, when, when I can just be fully a hundred percent in my skin, who I am, which is like what's happening now and what, and in the life I'm in now and make an impact and connect at a real level and feel like a, I'm not alone and we're not alone. And we're here together doing this life and uplifting one another. I mean, that to me, I mean, that's, you know, that's part of what I feel I'm here to do is to add that in, you know, empowerment, upliftment, encouragement, all of that, seeing people, seeing myself. But I think when you start to get into the reasons and the doubts to me, that's the, that's probably normal and be careful because, um, that can take you out of living, out of living your, you know, in your authentic, your yeah. desires, it really can. It did for me for, I mean, I have a lot of stories. The thing I talked about was I stopped dancing for 20 years because I had a teacher that told me I was too big and too heavy and too tall to be a dancer. And I grew up dancing. I love dancing. And, um, that's one of my favorite forms of movement today, but I believed her, you know, I just believed it. And, um, just gotta, we gotta be really conscious. It all comes back to being awake. We gotta be awake and, you know, you got to be awake because you got to notice what are you thinking and saying to yourself and not in a way yeah. where you're crazy about it. For me, I, I have to be careful. I can't, I don't want to like 
be walking around with a, you know, my notes open on my phone all the time, but if it doesn't feel good, I'm learning. That's not connected to, you know, for me, if, if it's aligned, it feels easy and it feels joyful and it feels fun and I have energy. So just, I've watched my energy. And I think that's a really good gauge to get a sense. If you're like, I don't know who I am. Well, look where you have a lot of energy. So I, I, I don't know if you've had this one, but sometimes when I'm on my path, I hear voices, it's almost like teachers or parents saying uh, things like, you're getting too big for your own boots. Or so, well, you know those sayings that will come. Yeah. I don't, in America, you may have similar ones. But yeah. yeah. And the, the, <clears throat> so that is the kind of feedback the ego would sometimes give, I feel, that it kind of is meant to protect us. Well, don't get too big. You know, stay small because then you're safe. If you're out there, you get criticized and whatever. Yeah. But the other one, the other thought I had was, um, we all have heroes. You mentioned a few heroes. Um, Wayne Dwyer and um, Louise Hay and Oprah. And I think in the beginning of our journey, we look at these people and we go, wow, yep. they're incredible. And at a certain point, we go, yeah, I'm, I, not that I could be like them, but I could do, but I could learn and maybe do something like what they're doing. You know, it's not that we're trying to parody someone. I know Wayne Dwyer, I, I heard him in London, and he was just such a beautiful storyteller. And it touched me, storytelling is such a beautiful thing to know how to do. And so we learn from these people rather than going, oh, I'm not worthy, they're so amazing, the, the pedestal, we put them as an idol, and you know, the celebrity culture, which is which is a lot of people probably feel, you know, that I remember looking at the Beatles and all these Beatle mania, all the women going, well, you're going crazy because these guys. And I thought, this is just a mass projection of something. You know, I think we do project mm -hmm. our own gifts and our own beauty onto various people, whoever it is. And we have to reclaim the light shadow and become, you know, like I don't consider myself a Wayne Dyer, but I do consider myself a storyteller. And he was very much a teacher of that. Oh, yeah. So do you think about these heroes where yeah. we're not there to compare ourselves, be better than them, but to learn from them? And maybe they're an example or resource for us, do you think? I love that. There are two thoughts that come to mind. I And I, I really think that's a flip. That's a switch to flip because getting out of that, you know, the whole to compare is to despair, which I really believe is true. But for me, it's, I'm inspired by that. I'm, you know, I, um, I listen to Louise Hay and Wayne Dare all the time. And I think, you know, both human beings, both with, with a deep desire to make a difference, both who went through challenging things. And I think, okay, I'm going to, I'm inspired by their stories. I'm inspired by the, their impact. Um, and this is actually this two things. One would be, you know, this is where I think bringing in that connection to something greater, the divine source, great spirit, God, whatever you call it. You know, for me, what's made a very big difference is the surrender piece and the, the offering up and saying, oh, yeah. you know, spirit, listen, I have this desire. I've had it since I was six. I've had this. I really, really want to do my part here to make an impact. So you know what? Use me. I always joke, like, put me in the game, like show me where, like make it clear to me. And that has taken a lot of pressure off. Um, you know, one of my, another mentor, I love, love, love. I've had her on my show too. Um, Barbara Stanny Houston. She's an author, um, of, uh, sacred success, rewire for wealth and overcoming under earning. And she's, she's also coached me. She's also, um, she's got a beautiful story. Um, and she, we, we had this conversation. I was talking about this and she said something that was profound. She said, Julie, cause I, you know, wanting to be humble as well. Like I value humility is, is, um, is a value is a virtue. She said, it is not humble for you to minimize God's gifts that you have. It's actually the opposite of what you're thinking. It would be a lack of humility if you do not use those gifts that you were given, meaning, you know, stepping into that, that powerful, you know, what might be seen as you're getting too big for your shoes, whatever she was. And I love when she said that it, it like was this flip again. And I'm like, oh, that's so brilliant. And it, yeah. it's helped me to just you know, we get, at least in this lifetime, we get one shot in this lifetime and that lack of humility, you know, it's kind of like when people say you're selfish, however, well, who, what other person am I living with than myself? Why would I not? I don't love that word. I think it should be self full. Like, I think we need to be, I need to be full in myself. So I know yeah. who I am. Um, 
so that lack of humility is actually that flip that Barbara said, I loved it was, you know, if I'm not expressing those gifts, that's a lack of humility. Um, that really yeah. helped me. Yeah. I think the, the other word that came to mind was being self-centered, isn't it? Self-centered. Yeah. Which yeah, is yeah, like, yeah. that means you don't think about anybody else, only yourself, which is, it's good. I mean, from the place of being centered, centered in the self, you can truly serve and connect with people rather than, you know, yeah. the people pleasing that we've both been through where you can't really connect meaningfully or powerfully with someone if you're pleasing them all the time. A hundred percent. You know, what just came to me is this, you were talking about, you know, there's kind of the two ends of the spectrum. I think you have narcissist, you know, narcissism and the doormat kind of people pleasing. I think it's the same thing, but the opposite end. And either way, if I'm not centered, if I'm not you know, in myself and, and, and connected with, with good boundaries and a good, you know, feeling and sense of who I am. Um, I, I have a sense that most, most of my listeners are probably, you know, I think as empaths and highly sensitive, we probably are more towards the side of, you know, the, the, um, the people pleasing dormant, that makes yeah. sense. Cause very in tune with energy. I can feel if someone doesn't like something immediately, if I they don't like something I said, or I mean, I can, usually feel before they say anything, um, and being yeah. okay with that. So, you know, learning how to be okay, learning how to be okay with criticism, with, with not agreeing, with seeing it differently. Well, you know, that's life. It's no, one's going to see it the same way versus the other side, that narcissist, it's kind of the flip side. So I think it's that healthy side of both. Um, and Anita Marjani talks about this in her new book. I love this. Uh, the sensitive is the new strong turning up the dial of ego and consciousness. When you turn off both in your boundaries, that's where you have that, that, that healthy, harmonious, you know, connection. Yeah, that's brilliant. Well, Julie, what are you up to these days? Let's share with the listeners, what you're doing, what's your offerings? What are you yeah. doing in the world right now? Oh, I took a moment. I'm like, what am I doing? Let's see. I took my kids to school. I went and got acupuncture. Like, that is the day to day here. Um, okay. I am. Yeah, no, I'm very grateful. Um, I have been following my inner guidance since I decided to, to really follow it that those 12, 13 years ago, but in starting this business and coaching and for me starting my, um, my coach certification program has just been such a such a labor of love. And I'm, I'm continuing to bring in more just amazing souls. Now we have people from all over the world and it's, um, you know, it's the, it's the whole, like how to coach core competencies module, you know, modality. And I weave in heart intelligence and intuition and, and energy work and positive psychology. And it just, it's, it's really an integrative approach. So that's been like, that is something I didn't know I'd be doing, but came through in the pandemic in the, in that, in that early time. And, um, you know, working on this next book, which is all about this topic, which is called yeah. who does she think she is? I have a couple, um, fun, I should say, uh, lessons about it that I didn't get into, but just ways of flipping this, but I really feel, especially for women, men too, but I think a lot of my sisters out there, a lot of women, I think we struggle with, and maybe the, maybe those in England who like to not feel as comfortable stepping in and owning, you know, your excellence and voice and gifts. And, um, I really want to help as many, especially women and men too, who feel this men deal with this too. I know that, um, I have many friends that do. I just, I, I think when we're able to tap into higher self into our, you know, you as to you and, see the ego, see that voice for what it is, but not let it thwart us from our, our dreams and our, and our vision and our, and our actions. I do think our, I do think this planet will be different. I do. I, I, I think we're going to have a, a shifting in consciousness. And I, and I, I believe the way to do that is through your inner guidance system, through your, you know, your, your, your inner guidance. Um, so that's so funny. I had some weird energy over here on my internet. Maybe it's just agreeing. Yeah, it's just and, <laughs> that is interesting. Well, if you're watching yeah. this, you saw a little, <laughs> yep. I, <laughs> a divine spirit speaks all the time through me. I'm like, okay. Um, no, I really, I really feel this is, this is the thing to this imposter syndrome. If you don't, if you don't watch it and check it out, it will stop you. And I'm a big believer, like, no, no, no. I don't want you to be stopped. I want you to go full force ahead in who you came here to be. And I'm really, really passionate about that for myself and for everyone. 
Well, do check out julieriesler.com, everyone listening to this. And it will, the link will go out with the podcast. Julie, amazing speaking with you. And, uh, you know, you're part of the shift, aren't you? You're part of the shift. You've got to be here. You know, oh, yeah. whatever you, you're being called to do, you need to do it. You can't be playing small. No. Okay. No. Julie. Thank you so much. Thank you, Steve, so much. I see the same in you. And I want to say to everybody listening, because I know people connecting in the same in you, my friend, if you're listening, stop playing small, tap into your hewest you, tell that little voice saying, who do you think you are? You can tell him, her, it, them. Thank you for sharing. As Louise Hay would say, I'm going to listen in to my higher self. I really hope you got that. And Steve, thank you for being a mentor, a friend, just being there on the journey and for your time today. Oh, it's great that you're in the world here with me somewhere in the world. Thanks, Judy. (laughs)